Welcome everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. We'll start our program in about two minutes to give everyone a chance to enter. But first, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Clariola Etienne and I graduated from Vassar in 2018. I'm so happy to be the MC of the program tonight. Just so you know, this event is actually being recorded and we will be uploading the recording to our website tomorrow. Throughout the event, you'll also be able to use our Q&A function to ask any question. Catherine Wu, a co-president of VHP, will be monitoring it. And now, while we're waiting, if you go into our website, you can look into our special art gallery that has gorgeous new Haitian art paintings. We're also offering a discount to all who have registered for this event tonight. We'll put the link in the chat for you all. <laughs> L'autre jour la langue naïve Et moi d'avant de tout petit à jouer à qui Nous t'a prévé en jour pour le voyage A jouer musique à l'étranger Pas de démon qui vous a menti Ou pas de rêver château l'on n'a qu'à y parler Papi mauvais mon mi fâché Welcome again, everyone. Uh, for those of you that have just joined us, again, my name is Clariola, and I will be the presenter for tonight. 
So to kickstart the event, it's my pleasure to introduce to you two amazing students who orchestrated the program for tonight. Sonia Gallocari, and a senior advisor, and Alice Finn, who is in her junior year. Let's all welcome both of them. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sonia Gallocari, one of the presidents for the Vassar Haiti Project. My name is Alice Fan, the vice president for the health committee. We are so honored to welcome you to our Art and Soul Gala. We can't believe this is the ninth year of raising funds for the clinic in Fearville, Haiti, which annually serves thousands of patients from over 40 villages. We are so excited to be with you tonight as we celebrate the strides being made to further healthcare and education accessibility in Haiti and around the world. First, some context. The Vassar Haiti Project, or VHP as we like to call it, is a collaboration between a nonprofit founded in 2001 and a student-led Vassar organization. Over 20 years, together we partner to further a threefold mission. First, to engage students in an experiential education of global citizenship. Second, is to promote Haitian artists' welfare and amplify their voices, transforming the dominant narrative of Haiti in mainstream media. The third is to foster sustainable development in Haiti from the proceeds of our art sales and fundraising events. We could talk about VHP for 24 hours straight and still not get to all of it. So for more information about our work, please do visit our website. I totally agree with everything you just asked, Sonia. Thank you. Um, the annual Art and Soul Gala is organized by the Health Committee in VHP, which I've been involved with since my freshman year. But I had no idea the scale of influence that our project has when I first joined. The Student Health Committee partners with our clinic in Farewell, Haiti, as Sonia mentioned. We are constantly thinking of ways to work towards sustainability and increasing accessibility to the people in surrounding villages. Of course, this is much easier said than done. There are many times when I feel stuck leading the health committee unsure of what projects we should work on, especially since we have not been able to travel to Haiti in the past three years. But we don't ever give up. We continue to do research so we can get to understand Haiti as much as possible. We connect with professionals in public health and our medical advisory board, which you'll hear more about later. Thinking about all of this truly broadens my way of seeing the world including learning about caring for the people far away from us. Our team is so committed to the work we are doing, and I have to admit, we always have a lot of fun doing it. The work we do in VHP, including holding the Art and Soul Gala, is literally what I think about almost all the time outside of classes. Alice, I don't know what I would do without you as my partner. I love how we laugh our way through all of our meetings. One of the most impactful lessons that we're learning in VHP is how to create something from nothing. What is that, you may ask? It's about coming up with a new idea of what could be, and through teamwork and collective action, turning that idea into reality. It trains us to think outside the box, to exercise our creativity, and empowers us to dream of new possibilities. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been working hard to reimagine this Art and Soul Gala. For me, it's been a daunting yet exciting ride over the past seven months, figuring out how to recreate such a sensational and intimate event, normally attended by over 150 people, into a virtual one. Can you believe that we've been coordinating with over 85 people to organize this event? We are so incredibly excited to kick off tonight's gala, to honor two trailblazers in the field of education and global health, and to share this evening with all of you. We have an amazing program prepared. We will start off with a few words from our partners in Haiti, followed by an introduction by the Medical Advisory Board who have helped to create this event, then remarks from the honorees. And we will conclude with an incredible one night only performance by Grammy award-winning artists Wyclef Jean and Jerry Wanda. I promise that you'll wanna put on your dancing shoes by the end of the evening. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Sonia and Alice, for the work that you do in the health committee. And I remember exactly just how much that work is. So kudos to both of you. 
a little backstory about me. Uh, when I went to Haiti during my undergraduate years, I was able to work closely with Pierre Andre Wilden and Dr. Gessler Jossinville, the two Haitian professionals who make the impossible possible. We'd love for you to get to know them through a video about the clinic. Please note that the quality of some of the footage is not perfect. Hello everyone, I'm uh, uh, Per Wilden Andre, uh, call me uh, EW. Uh, I want uh, to begin to say you welcome to this great event, welcome to um, that possibility to make change or to make some difference somewhere in, in the world, especially in Shemet and Goumont. So thank, I want to say you all so thank you for that. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for participating in, in that event and also and supporting um, Shemet and those people, those families. I say, I say good morning to everybody. Today is a great day for us to receive you, to welcome you in the clinic. The clinic in this area is really 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 important so without this clinic if VAP didn't help for this clinic we didn't know how people of these villages would live so it's really critical the presence of this clinic in this area so the clinic is serving there are 40 villages in the in the country in this area so people many 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 miles to get the clinic to provide to get help here. So before that, the people of this area didn't have anywhere to get help here. It's for that reason. So VHP is so important. So um, today we are in a bad situation, political situation in Haiti. So there is chaos, there's unrest uh, every day, everywhere, uh, mostly in the capital. Uh, and the main cities, uh, so all that situation affect the life of the people in the mountain of Chemet and the mountains of Gomon. So all the countries, I can say, on the mountains. So because that uh, bring to them inflation, that bring to them uh, like lack of possibility uh, to afford uh, the farm, to afford the needs of the, their families, to afford uh, everything that that they need because they become they by day by that situation are poor. So I want to say thank you for everybody, or everyone who support them. And I'm so great, I'm so grateful for the citizen of, for this American citizen who are really the citizen of the world. So before them, we didn't know what we could do. So when people work many miles to get there, and because the reputation of the clinic is really, really, really good for these villages. So it's really important when they get there, they benefit healthcare. So before that, those people didn't have opportunity to get a to get medication, to get the consultation with the doctor. So I'm so grateful for everything which is doing for the people of my country. I'm also sending my love to people of America, of America who are suffering with COVID, and I hope future they will, will have a solution with COVID in this world. So every everything everything I could say it's really thank thank you for this opportunity for American people to get this project in life to help VHP and all people who are helping for this project. So I want to say thank you for everybody, or everyone who support them and in a way that can be thoughts or um, talking to other people or friends according to their situation any kind of support you do. So I want to say you thank you. And your thoughts is really, really important for those people and your support also. So thank you for your support. So let us continue to make change in that part of the world.
Thank you so much. So as you all know, it takes a village to make greatness happen. And the health committee in the Vasarity project is no different as we have our medical advisory board that have eight physicians who are committed to the sustainability of the clinic in Haiti. Dr. David Cho, a Hudson Valley internist, is the chair of this board who has helped immensely in the crea creation of our event tonight. Let us welcome him to introduce the board and his experiences. Hello, hello, how are you? Uh, hello and bonsoir. I'd like to welcome you to our ninth annual Art and Soul Gala and our first ever virtual fundraising event. My name is Dr. David Cho and I serve as the chair for the Medical Advisory Board for the Vassar Haiti Project. The board was formed in 2013 to support the then newly built medical clinic in Charmette, which as you have heard, serves a large community of patients from over 50 surrounding villages. It's been our role to provide medical guidance for the clinic, sending vital medications and supplies, and working with Avastra students on projects related to healthcare delivery in this remote part of the world. The current projects we've been working on include collecting and analyzing data on patient demographics and disease states in the clinic, establishing a girls' health brochure to educate the young women of Shermet about reproductive health and self-awareness, public health education to promote collaboration with nearby hospitals and clinics to help coordinate care, and our most ambitious project to date, assembling solar panels in the clinic to provide much needed electricity, light, and refrigeration for vaccines. In years past, our team has been able to visit Haiti with the students several times per year, where we able to assist Dr. Gesselin in the clinic seeing patients, and meeting with families and providing critical medications and supplies. At this time, sadly, this has not been possible due to the pandemic and political unrest in Haiti. We are more dependent than ever on our liaison, Claire Winding, and other partners in Haiti to continue the progress that we have made, providing essential health services to those most in need. Given these challenges though, I'm happy to report our team has rallied beyond belief. We continue to be in contact with our brothers and sisters in Haiti and have told them not to lose hope. And though we cannot be there physically with them, we have not forgotten you. We continue to host fundraising events, auction beautiful Haitian artwork, raise money and awareness for the clinic, and tonight's event will mark the culmination of these efforts. I would like to acknowledge all the generous sponsors tonight and uh, recognize the Poughkeepsie Arlington Rotary Club and its 14 other clubs whose incredible contribution has supported our solar panel project. Finally, a special thanks to my colleagues on the Medical Advisory Board who have donated precious time away from their patients and medical practices in the height of COVID. These include Nancy Bellock, Dr. Ernest Bartolome, Dr. Diane Cicatello, Dr. Kim Heller, Dr. Dan Katz, Dr. Sarah Levin, Dr. Adam Rubenstein, Dr. Ingrid Dodard, and Dr. Rich Freeland. Thank you so much for attending tonight's event and for your generous donation. I know I speak for all of us when I say merci on pied. And now I would like to reintroduce our MC for tonight, Clariola. Clariola, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Cho. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone, we have set aside a great collection of Haitian art for all the attendees at our event. And we're also offering a discount to help sell a lot of paintings so we can turn around and buy more paintings. The extremely talented Haitian artists want to keep painting. So what does that mean? It means that you have to keep buying. So please visit our website to view the, to view the gallery. The link will be put on the chat. And now it is my privilege to introduce to you Dr. Paul Farmer, whom had had the opportunity to meet in my freshman year when VHB went to Boston. You know, I must admit, I was very impressed about how well he spoke Creole when I first met him. As you might know, Dr. Farmer is a previous honoree of this Art and Soul Gala, and he's, he's also a co-founder and a chief strategist of Partners in Health. Dr. Farmer is a, and his colleagues have pioneered novel, community-based healthcare treatment strategies in resource-poor setting, especially Haiti. 
Hi, I'm Paul Farmer. Uh, good evening from Sierra Leone. I'm sorry not to be there with you in person for the BHP Gala, uh, but I have the enviable task of introducing the first awardee. What can I say about Kaol Berot Jose? Well, there's a lot to be said, and certainly it's a CV that's familiar to me because Carol is a great academic. She's come up through the ranks to the pinnacles of American higher education, graduate studies in sociolinguistic, becoming a professor, becoming a dean, and finally becoming more than once a university or college president. But Carol is not an ivory tower academic. When there's a problem out there, whether that be in the state of New York, across the nation of the United States or in Haiti, Kawol will be there. If you're worried about dreamers and others who are deemed to be undocumented in their college education, Kawol will be I'm right done. there. If you're worried about literacy, whether in the state of New York or the city of New York or in Haiti, and how to make bilingual education work for young people, even very young people, Kawol will be there. Whether it's working as a teacher or an editor or an author, yes, she'll be there for those activities as ever. But she'll be there for VHP as you all try to move forward the goal of global health equity in Haiti and beyond. So please join me in welcoming to the podium, Kawol. Bonsoir tout le monde. Cléola, tout le monde t'aime? Oui, tout le monde t'aime. Ok, magnifique. Merci beaucoup, hein? Paul, merci beaucoup pour Belle Moyo. It's really a pleasure to hear Paul this evening. I had a pleasure of uh, working with him as well when I was in uh, Massachusetts and then in Haiti. So it's wonderful to have him continuously support VHP. I was asked to say a few words this evening, and in thinking about what I would say, I uh, thought back on when I was a little girl and how I always wanted to be helpful to people and how I always wanted to fight for those who really didn't have much of a voice. And so one of my uh, most important you know, models, if you will, or she rose was Joan of Arc. And I remember reading as a young girl a lot about her and the fact that she really didn't use weapons, though she took on a lot of leadership and was in the front lines to try to liberate her country, France. She outlined strategies, she encouraged and directed troops she proposed diplomatic solutions and was at least wounded twice while she was in the front lines, but she never really wanted to fight the physical fight. Unfortunately, she lived a short life, but a remarkable one. And in retrospect, as I think of this award, as you can imagine, having been an educator so long, having participated in the community in so many things, I have been blessed to receive many awards. And I think my unshakable devotion, like Joan of Arc, the belief in a vision, the strong faith, the wanting to be of help to others, especially to those without too much of a voice really um, pushed me to take on a lot of leadership positions when in fact, I may not have uh, been predisposed or ready to. So it has been a matter of jumping in and doing what needed to be done. In many ways, this parallels Haiti the country that we are celebrating today, the country that we are working in today, because Haiti itself started young, fought, as you know, against slavery, 
won its independence in 1804 and didn't just keep that wonderful independence and pride and liberation for itself. Haiti liberated many other countries, helped many other countries to get their freedom in the 19th and 20th centuries, whether it was South Africa, whether it was South America, whether it was Greece and the United States itself. So Haitians have participated and have really strengthened this democracy that we are so fortunate to live in. So when I think back about Joan of Arc being the fearless warrior, the heroine, and uh, the person who really led the good fight for her country, I am very proud and very pleased that I've been blessed to have the health to have the support of many people who've crossed my path, including the wonderful people at VHP. The students who you heard from earlier are an example and a hope that things will be better in this world. If we continue to dialogue and continue to transform our communities, the work that Paul Farmer himself has done in Haiti teaches us that education is very important. It teaches us that we need to participate. It's always safer to sit by on the sidelines and go along with things and not really take positions. But the things that I've been really very um, forthright in defending have to do with the liberation of the Haitian people and creating an educational system that would really be fundamentally important for every single child to develop. So today, as I receive this award from VHP, I want to dedicate it to all the children of Haiti, the future of Haiti, those who need to be liberated to be able to be free, to be able to enjoy a life that many of us have been blessed to live. And so I ask you to continue to support the VHP project. I thank you for your presence here with me tonight in um, one more celebration. And to Lila and Andrew and Sonia and Cleola and uh, Catherine, I say to you, continue the good work. All of you are making a difference and that's what it's all about. We want to make sure that we teach peace, we teach love and we liberate through education. And that has been my lifelong goal. So thank you so much for this evening. I also want to take the opportunity to congratulate my um, co-honoree who is also a college president who's done amazing things. Looking forward to hearing from her. Thank you. And while we do have you, Dr. Bewood, um, we there are also some special people who would like to say a few words to you. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Kawal Bewat Joseph. That's my mom. I am so happy to celebrate you this evening for your honor and recognition of all the work that you've been doing in Haiti. Tonight, we thank you, we love you, and we appreciate you. Bravo. <laughs> Hi, Carol. You, your life, and your work are profoundly inspiring to me, and I feel so lucky to get to call you my friend. Thank you for being a shining example of what is possible in Haiti and throughout the world through education, determination, perseverance, and leadership. You're the kind of human being whose life reminds us of what authentic success looks like in so many impactful areas. Congratulations on your well-deserved celebration by the Vassar Haiti Project. It's my pleasure.
pleasure, my dear sister Kawal, to congratulate you on being honored by the Vassar Haiti Project. You are a true humanitarian, always giving of yourself and generous in sharing your blessings. Even in retirement, you remain active and tirelessly serve on various committees. Kawal, chapeau bas. Hats off to you, sis. God bless. Hi, Mom. It's Bailey and Gigi here, wishing you a big congratulations for all your hard work for Haiti and on behalf of Haiti. We are so happy that you're being honored and recognized and receiving an award from the Haiti Vassar Project. Congratulations, Grandma. How you doing over there? I hope you have a good time. Congratulations. We love you. Mwah. I love you too. Hi, Carol. This is your sister Yolan here, congratulating you on the Vasa Haiti Project recognition. Our immigrant parents instilled in us the values of service while embracing our Haitian culture. You have taken this to the max. I admire your constant involvement in and dedication to humanitarian projects pertaining to Haiti. Congrats on your award, and I am so very proud of all the work that you do. I am so honored to have been invited to say a few words about Dr. Carol Bewot Joseph, a dear friend, a trusted colleague, and a fearless leader. No matter the role, you always excel. It's no surprise that the Vasa Haiti Project selected you as an honoree for the Art and Soul Gala. I share their admiration and applaud your many contributions, especially to the people of Haiti. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations to my sister, Dr. Carol Barote Joseph, as an honoree for this year's Art and Soul Gala, which supports the Vassar Haiti Project. You're a pillar in the education community. You have and continue to serve the Haitian community and all communities. And I am inspired by your strength, your resilience, and your commitment to improving the lives of many people. In the words of Dr. Maya Angelou, we may encounter defeat, but we must never, ever be defeated. Congratulations, I love you so much. Oh my God, thank you so much. This really was very, very moving. I appreciated all of the comments by family and friends. Total surprise. Thank you. Yeah, that video is so sweet. <laughs> and uh, adding on to that, Dr. Burrow Joseph, the Vassar Haiti Project would also like to thank you and award you a gift of an original Haitian painting. Mm. Uh, this painting is by Haitian artist John Adrian Said. His works are internationally known. As Said says, Beyond the visible landscape, there is another landscape which people do not see. I want to supplement reality, to recreate a lost Eden, to celebrate the unspoiled beauty and harmony of Haiti as it was in the past. Dr. Burrow Joseph, we hope this painting brings you into a world of peace and unlimited possibilities. Thank you very much, truly appreciate it, it's beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Bawad Joseph, for being who you are and for the incredible work that you do. I wish we could have met in person, but there's still time. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> now, I'd like to invite Sonia's co-president, Catherine Wu, a senior advisor, to facilitate the questions and answers. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here tonight. So we do have some questions for Carol. So our first one is, of all the amazing things you've accomplished 
Carol, what is the one achievement that stands out as the one you are most proud of today? I am most proud of being a mom, of raising two wonderful young ladies who are great human beings. Oh, that is very sweet. And our second question, if you could set three goals for education of children in the rural areas in Haiti, such as Shermet, what would they be? Well, I certainly would want them to be first and foremost educated in their own language, and that is in Creole. Second, provide environments that are very supportive and loving and allowing them to be the children that they are so that they can flourish. And third, I'd allow them and would want them to explore the world. So whatever opportunities, whatever ways, even if it has to be through Zoom like we're doing now, but that they would be able to have um, those kinds of opportunities to know themselves and to know others. Yes, that's amazing. Um, and also we know that community college is something that is near and dear to your heart. So we're wondering, what is your vision for community colleges in Haiti? Well, one of the things that has been um, really weighing on me is the fact that so many of the children who get educated in Haiti, who are well-educated, continue to leave the country because there are no opportunities for work. And so it, while it's wonderful to have a classic liberal arts education and to major in the liberal arts, it, for a country that is being developed, we really need to provide opportunities for people to go to school and end up with a profession and a job so that they can earn a living. Having earned a living, they can always continue their education all the way to the doctoral level and postdoctoral studies. And so it's very important, I think, for community colleges in Haiti to be able to offer the kinds of programs that will lead to livelihoods and success so that people can really live fulfilled lives. And I think this is a uh, this could kind of be a follow up question to that is how do you see transformative change in Haiti? Well, I think transformative change um, will come through education, but proper education of the self, pride, and um, and once you know yourself and you love yourself, you're able to love other people, and so I think it's. Um, transformative education via reflection, via dialogue, via communications of all kinds at all levels will lead to transformations. Very well said. Mm. And this is a more personal question. Um, did you grow up in Haiti? And when did you come to the U United States? And did your parents bring you and your sisters to the United States? Yes. I uh, was born in Haiti, left um, at the age of eight. And so I came into elementary school here. Um, we did come with our parents. So our family was uh, intact, unlike many immigrant groups who tend to come in um, different waves and different groups. And um, I have very good fond memories of schooling. I went to St. Trinity School in Haiti, where music was an integral part of that school. So I learned to play the violin. I learned to play the piano. Um, we come from a very musical family where many of us played instruments. And so we've had lots of little mini concerts among ourselves. And so um, it was really very good. Coming here, of course, I didn't know a word of English. So I was an ESL student, except that at that time, there were no ESL classes. And so I recall running to my mom to ask her to look in her book, L'Anglais sans peine, for, which is English without pain, if you will, um, so that she can give us words. And we would run down then to go play with the kids and talk. 
So, um, so I myself um, learned through English as a second language. And at that time, as I said, there was no English as a second language. So the practice was to put you back one year. And so instead of going into the third grade, I believe I was put into the second grade. So I could have one year to catch up. Today, we know that that is not the best educational pedagogy. <laughs> and so children who arrive who are non-English speakers um, usually are assigned to ESL classes these days. But um, I, as a child, I witnessed atrocities in Haiti. My uh, mother's family really suffered under the Duvalier dictatorship. And so coming to the United States was definitely a blessing. Um, my brother, Roland, who's no longer with us, um, always used to thank my parents for bringing us to the US and giving us the opportunity to have a better life. But they always ingrained in us also the love for Haiti. And so we've always remained connected through the language, through the culture, and by going back from time to time. Wow, that was that was very nice. I wish we knew that you played. Maybe we could have invited you to do a performance tonight. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, we do have one last question, which mm -hmm. is what advice do you have for young people to persevere in the face of what seems like overwhelming odds against them? Well, I think, um, you know, there are, life is not rosy all the time. There are challenges, there are ups and downs. The thing is to believe in yourself. And if we can help young people to believe in themselves and to give them opportunities to shine and to test themselves, they would really be able to see how great they can become. And I think um, adults around children need to do that, to be supportive of children and allow them to be themselves. They're such wonderful creatures. Thank you for that advice. Thank you so much, Carol. You're welcome. Clariola, it's back to you. Thank you, Catherine. And now Dr. Former would also like to say a few words to Dr. Bradley. Hi, everybody. It's me, I'm back. And again, I get to introduce an awardee, your second tonight. This is someone who's well known to all of you already. She too, like Kaol, is an academic luminary. But like Kaol, she's luminous because she has a heart of gold and it shines right through. It comes out in her academic work on and in the field of public health where she's been a leader I'm, I, the name of her university escapes me right now, but it's in New Haven, Connecticut. And from that post, she has done great things for the city of New Haven, the state of Connecticut, but also our nation as a leading and critical thinker about how not to do healthcare badly. Now that doesn't sound like an exciting specialty, but as we've all learned over the course of the last year, it's exactly this kind of steering that we need to move our ship of state out of very difficult waters. And it's not just the United States. We've been lucky enough to work with Betsy uh, in Rwanda, for example, where she helped lead and establish the first hospital and management program in the country. And this work, which was designed to strengthen the Rwandan healthcare series, she's worked with the Clinton Foundation, certainly with Partners in Health, but tonight we're here about Haiti. And since she arrived at Vassar, Betsy has been committed to doing more for what is for many of us our favorite country, our oldest neighbor, the Republic of Haiti. So I uh, applaud BHP for honoring Betsy's commitment to this cause, and I applaud Betsy for keeping that big heart of hers, luminous as it is, with a lot of space for Haiti. Thank you all for letting me be here with you tonight, and here's Betsy. Wow. Thank you, Paul. That's really something else. I've known Paul for a very, very long time, but never been to Haiti, which I guess we'll have to change that someday. Um, well, first, I'm so honored to be honored, honestly, and to share this um, with Dr. Barreau Joseph after just hearing everything that you just said. I, I was so inspired by your words, so thank you. And to Alice Fan and Sonia Golakari, 
wow, what a huge event you have pulled off. And I'll try not to spoil it for you because you have really just outdone yourselves. And it doesn't surprise me because from my very first week at Vassar, the Vassar Haiti Project had me over and explained what they had done and I was inspired from the very first time. So it doesn't surprise me you've been able to do this, but um, really terrific to be part of it. And I hope that everybody who's listening today will definitely invest in a lot of this art. We have it all over the college and all over our house and it is uh, just a pleasure to have and it will really support the uh, um, VHP, so please do so. So I was asked to talk a little bit about um, insights in global health and maybe some experiences I had in my career and I'm still having. Um, you know, and the very first thing I thought of when people say what's an insight about global health um, is something I'm sure VHB knows, all the students, you just have to get to the field. The field is the place and I, I don't think we can possibly know what we're going to come across. Um, and whether our hearts are going to be, you know, in the right place, or, or is, are we going to be valuable until we're actually in the field? It's just impossible to do from textbooks. It's impossible to do from the United States. It's just impossible to do from our own homes. If we're really talking about global health, being in partnership and um, physically together in these places is so, so, so important. Um, and I am really reminded um, about the first time I did any global health, which was in 2005. Um, and I was asked by the Clinton Foundation to go to Ethiopia. And imagine this, I had a 10 year old, a seven year old and a four year old. And I came home from that place in New Haven one day to my wonderful husband, John, who is here and said, hey, John, you wanna go to Ethiopia? And he about, I think fell over, but then it wasn't long before he said, you know, we can make this work. I think we could hire someone to take care of our kids. And, um, off we went. Um, and that was just the first visit. Of course, we came back to raise our children, but the first visit uh, really changed my life. And I think um, he and I were just talking about this at dinner and we both remember the harrowing experiences of the very first trip, but um, this has been etched in my mind. Um, I was in Nekem, which is in a very, very rural place in Ethiopia. Um, and I was had a nurse that was working with me who had come from Yale as well. Um, and we were sleeping in maybe what could be called a hotel. It was iffy. Um, and when we got up, we really hadn't had dinner. We had Coca-Cola for dinner and we really hadn't had breakfast either. And it didn't look like we were going to get much breakfast. And on the way to the hospital to do the evaluation, the work that I do, um, I fainted. And I've never fainted in my life, but I fainted in Nekamp, Ethiopia. And there is just no healthcare around there. Um, thankfully, I came through quickly, um, came too quickly. And Cindy, the nurse that was with me, said, you're going to be OK. Don't worry about it. Get yourself. And you know, I kind of got myself together, but was feeling kind of sorry for myself being so far from home and, and like, what is going on with me? But we had to go off to the hospital. So off we went. And within about 15 seconds of being there, I completely forgot about my ills as I noted all of the pieces of this hospital that were so broken and so under-resourced and the people so loving to take care of each other, but just nothing. And the picture etched in my mind is looking at their NICU where their you know, prenatal babies were put and it was on a blanket um, inside a room that had nothing, nothing at all. And um, you know, the infants died a lot. Um, and I will say it was that moment that I just said, I have been a hospital administrator, you know, managing hospitals is something I know how to do. And I think maybe I could help a bit. And that started off a 10 year career um, working very regularly with Dr. Tedros in Ethiopia and with his help, um, you know, we really made, I think, a big difference. And also, uh, Paul said we took the Rwanda model to Ethiopia. I think Ethiopia might say we took the Ethiopia model to Rwanda, but we did end up working in Rwanda, Liberia, um, and Ethiopia using similar tools. Um, so I guess just from this, the idea of being in the field makes such a difference. Um, and the other insight that I would share is that you can't really focus on the outcomes, you know, which is contradictory because we study, oh, create smart objectives and uh, think of the end in mind and try to get these outcomes. But I find after, you know, 35 years in public health, sure, you're going for the outcomes, but you can't control the outcomes. You can't really know whether something is going to matter or not matter. You do the very best you can and you shoot for the stars and you measure your outcomes, but if you are hooked by the outcomes only, you won't last because you have to just love the process of helping people, of um, 
thinking creatively with hardly any resources, how you can save lives, um, of collaborating with people that you're barely learning the language they know and um, really sharing what you know, but really listening to what they know. Um, that's all process, that's not outcome. But I found that that really keeps you alive. And the people I've known in this career who have su survived it and sort of stay with it after decades and decades have that sense that, you know, it's better to be working there. You won't always get what you want, just like our um, former awardee said, but it is better to be working there. And I think um, I just end with um, this concept that is quite new, but also I think of it as age old. Um, you know, everybody who's studying global health now is all about decolonizing global health. And of course, yes, 100% right. But interestingly, if you've been around for a while, actually the word global health was created to decolonize international health management, which was very popular in the 70s and 80s. And global health came around to really say, we're one globe. Everybody is in one globe. It's one health, it's one people. And that we have to collaborate and share and um, prioritize health equity above all. And, um, you know, those with resources have to absolutely um, decolonize those resources and share that power. So I think there is nothing more important than that. Power changes everything and understanding what power you have and how to use it and how to share it uh, really and give access to others to the power is so fundamental. Um, so just the, my final word about VHP, um, you know, from my get go of listening, um, first of all, huge shout out to Andrew and Lila Mead. And I know their daughter Kristen is here too, um, who just, we could not do it without them. Um, their warmth and inspiration and charisma. I mean, they, they can get anybody to do anything in all good ways. Um, it has been so essential. And um, what we find in VHP is these students, you know, not only are they book smart and cognitively just there, and intellectually there, but the VHP really offers for them the ability to express their hearts and to learn through their hearts and to really think kind of outside the textbook. And I don't know, you can't get a better education than that. And I can't wait till um, VHP can be back in the field where I've seen so many of the doctors and the nurses and the students who have been involved with VHP, you know, they're full of humility. They're full of openness and generosity, really just as Paul Farmer has always been. And also how global people, global health people really should be. So again, thank you so much for this honor. It's a great, great fun to be here with you. And um, I hope the event is wildly successful. Thank you. And of course, Dr. Bradley, there are also some fan of yours who would like to share a few words. Oh my gosh, now that I've seen the other. Hello, Betsy, or PB, as you're called around here. Greetings from the President's House, which we share together. You have spent a lot of time and energy on Vassar College and global health. So what an appropriate thing to bring those two loves together in this celebration with the Vassar Haiti project. Hopefully at some point we'll be able to travel to Haiti together. Congratulations and you always have my love and admiration, John. Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. It's me, Wes, as you know, and I am so honored and so happy to join others in celebrating you as part of the Vassar Haiti Project's Art and Soul Gala. I know that you love art, you have a little bit of soul, but more importantly, you have a beautiful heart. And honoring you at a gala where the proceeds go to support the funds and operations of a clinic in Haiti couldn't be more perfect. I've been in clinics with you all over the world, in Ghana, in Ethiopia, in Rwanda, but not Haiti. Hopefully sometime we get a chance to go and try some soup jumu. But until then, have a beautiful night and enjoy the celebration. Bye. Congrats, mom. Um, love you and am proud of you.
Once, when our friend Betsy was on a trip for public health, she texted me from a very remote spot and from a hotel. She said to me that they were in the midst of a terrible flood, but she told me not to worry because the water was only up to the first floor and she was on the second floor. Congratulations, Betsy. If everybody were as visionary, as energetic, as community spirited, as proactive, as collegial, and as collaborative as you are, we wouldn't have to worry about the rest of the world. Hi mom, congrats on your award. Your hard work and dedication have always been inspiring to me, as I'm sure they have been to many of the people who know you. I've been especially impressed watching you lead Vassar through this difficult year and come through really with flying colors. Uh, I can't think of anyone who would be more deserving of an award like this. I hope you enjoy the event and hope I get to see you real soon. An ode to Vassar's 11th president, Betsy Bradley, on the occasion of the Haitian Art and Soul Gala, who recognizes the totality of Betsy's contributions. She's a worldwide global health expert. She's a long-term pandemic tamer. She's a worldwide liberal arts super spreader. She's a published social justice advocate. She's an excellent encourager. She's a fan generator. She's an award winner. Congratulations, Betsy. Hi, Mom. Here are some flowers. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Love you so much. Um, feel so grateful for you. And um, sending you love from North Carolina. Wow, that is crazy. Thank you so much, everybody. I, I can't believe you found my children. <laughs> um, that's really very meaningful to me. I appreciate it. And that was really so sweet. And I just want to personally thank you, President Bradley, for everything you've done to Vassar students these many years. I can't even believe how busy you must have been. <laughs> <laughs> just like you. <laughs> and um, yeah, and the Vassar Haiti Project would also like to thank you and award you a gift of an original Haitian painting. Thank you. This artist, Joseph T. Song, is from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and famous for depicting imaginary cities. T. Song's dreamscapes use bright, bold colors to combine both Haitian landscapes and his imagination of what the world could look like. There's so much going on in his artwork with many things taking place simultaneously. The painting directs your gaze towards the top, taking us all into yet another dream world. Hope you like it. <laughs> I love it. That is fabulous. I know exactly where it's gonna go in my office already. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we have a couple questions for you, Dr. Bradley. Thank you, Fariola and Alice. And of course, President Bradley for everything that you do for Vassar. So we do have um, a couple questions. An audience also wants to congratulate you and thank you for all the wonderful work that you do. And the question is, what has stopped you from going to Haiti? And I think you kind of touched on it during your speech. Yeah, well, let's see. You know, that's kind of an interest, deeper question than it sounds like. Um, when I've traveled for global health, I've often been invited by the country or been invited by a group that is working there. And I've never been invited to Haiti, to tell you the truth. And I actually think that is a little bit about the decolonization. I have never said like, here I am, I'm gonna come and, you know, if somebody invites and says, we want your capacity and your skills, um, that's usually when I visit. Great. And VHP promises to be back to Haiti as soon as we can. And hopefully so. you can join us in one of the trips. And so this is kind of a, a fun question. Um, so we get 
re email replies from you within one minute of sending them to you and at all hours of the night. So do you ever sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. People have been asking me that all my life, but ask my husband. I do sleep. I definitely sleep. Um, but I think there is something about being responsive that um, is part of caring for people. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I feel like when I write to people, I like when they write back, not this same minute, but you know, within a day or two. So um, I don't know, it just seems like one of those small things that can mean a lot. So yeah, I try to do it. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> and also um, you've been involved in so many different projects and of all the work that you've been doing, um, what has been the most rewarding for you and why? Um, uh, Work-wise, you're saying? Yes. Projects. You said projects. Okay. And my children are not projects. <laughs> <laughs> they could be. Um, you know, the very first thing that came to my mind, and I do feel like I've had so many experiences that I have found to be rewarding, but I have to say getting Vassar through this pandemic has been tremendously rewarding. I mean, just today, I sort of realized that pretty much everybody um, on the senior team is just about fully vaccinated. And I sent this email to say, do you think we're ever going to be able to have a meeting soon with no masks? And you know, it's it's not today, but it's on the horizon. And thinking that just 15 months ago, we thought we were probably not going to be able to open, you know, I mean, we just didn't think we would ever get through with the approach. And I think it's been really fulfilling because I've been able to watch the students just become young adults and just become sort of recognizing, it's almost been like global health on campus. It's like students, I think, have really recognized they're part of something bigger than themselves and that they want to be part of that and give to it and protect it. And that's community, which has just been so gratifying to see. And I think I can speak for a lot of us at Vassar that you've just done a stellar job um, leading Vassar through this pandemic. I think our school is really doing so well. Mm, um, well it's been a big team effort. <laughs> and also along the same lines, um, what is your favorite part of your job? Oh, um, you know, I think the favorite part of my job is meeting with students. I just like it. I love teaching. Um, and, you know, it was really, I, I never knew if I would really want to be a president because you can't spend as much time teaching. Um, but I really enjoy being part of students' lives as they sort of transition from adolescence to young adulthood. And the kind of ideas they have just keeps you young. I may not look young, but inside, I, I feel young because it's, uh, yeah, they just, especially at Vassar, students just always have a new idea and teach me something new every day. So I think that really is my favorite part. That's amazing. And another question, what has been more rewarding, hospital management or higher education leadership? <laughs> wow. Um, you know, they're incredibly similar, I gotta tell you. It's crazy because when you're an administrator of a hospital, physicians and surgeons, you know, they're gonna do what they wanna do. And when you're the president of a college, you got the faculty and they're gonna do what they wanna do. And uh, so the administrative task inside these highly specialized institutions is always for me so interesting because it's really, you're there to facilitate the relationship either between the patient and the doctor or between the student and the faculty. You know, you're not there to be the relationship, you're trying to facilitate an environment in which that critical relationship can flourish. Um, and I, I really can't pick. I mean, in my life right now, I really am excited about higher education leadership, but I do miss um, being able to be in the thick of um, low income settings where hospitals are really trying to make ends meet. So I don't know, I'm waffling. <laughs> um, and I think we can end with the same question for um, Dr. Carol Barat Joseph, which is what advice do you have for young people to persevere in the face of challenges? Yeah, um, number one, remain curious. You know, when you get hit with horrible things, instead of like, oh, I can't take it, put my head under, it's like, hmm, how did this happen? Why did this happen? What else could happen? You know, like ask the questions constantly. And that curiosity, I think, really feeds our soul because when you're curious, the next thing that happens is you're learning and then you're growing. Um, and I think that really feeds the spirit. So I think that would really, um, you know, stay curious and, you know, think about something bigger than yourself, really. That would be my two thoughts. 
Thank you so much, Catherine Bradley. Thank you, Catherine. I'm going to give the floor back to Clariola. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, in case you missed the earlier announcement, everyone, I'd like to invite you to take a look at our website, where we have set aside a great collection of Asian art for all the attendees at today's event. And we're also offering a discount. Did you know that the more painting we sell, the more we get to buy? And that actually VHP supports the livelihood of over 50 artists. Thanks for your incredible generosity. Currently, our donations are 43,000. We invite you to donate on, and purchase paintings through next Thursday, May 6, to help us reach our goal, which is 50,000. Thanks again for your generous hearts. And now it's time to kick back so all of us can be entertained by Grammy Award winners, Wyclef Jean and Jerry Wanda. Both performers are of Haitian descent and have gone to become worldwide superstars. Jerry is a multi-platinum Grammy Award winner, producer, musician, and songwriter who has published over 300 titles and worked with Michael Jackson, Justin Bieber, Whitney Houston, and Shakira, just to name a few. Perhaps his most famous collaboration was, if, was, his, was with his cousin, Wyclef Jean, who in 1996 formed the Fugees, which sold one of the best-selling hip-hop albums of all time, The Score. Wyclef has since purchased a solo career as rapper, lyricist, songwriter, and activist who has been a champion for Haiti. For once in a lifetime engagement, Wyclef and Jerry have teamed up again to perform an acoustic tribute for our benefit tonight. It gives me so much pleasure to introduce the next video, so enjoy, and I hope you guys do dance behind the screen. Jerry Wonder, Wyclef, uh, Marquis. This is so like, we're, this is going to be incredible because a lot of people hear our final products. Of, of the music yeah and first of all let's let's be clear this is for Vassar for ba Haiti, for Vassar, Haiti project Art and Soul Gala the Art and Soul Gala and we are honored to be here and whatever y'all get is what y'all gonna get because we said acoustic vibe right yeah. so yeah. I hope everybody is recording what we're doing right now because yeah it's, um, it's, it's definitely gonna be a vibe uh, not us yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, saying yeah. people watching right now hope they're recording. Yeah. Because this will never be duplicated. That is true. Like, so <laughs> I hope y'all giving millions of dollars right now. Donate, donate for a great cause. So, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and people got to understand, like, when it comes to Haiti, the idea of 80% yeah. of a population living on less than a dollar a day, you know, we have to commend these doctors. Mm -hmm. Nurses, big shout out to them. They doing, don't like them. you know, sacrifice. And this is what we call public service. Also, non Haitians too. You know, non That's right. Well, the non Haitians, yeah. we call them what? You don't know, right? Yes. No, we call them HBO. You know what I mean? Oh, HBO. No. Haitian by association. Wow. Yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. Nah, we ain't gonna go with HBO the way they used to tease the Haitians. We flipped it. We flipped it. Haitian by association. That. Club, you ready? Bonjour, bonjour. You know, this morning, like, I woke up and I was thinking about co mastermind, you know, like, yeah. I want everybody to just think for a second. Co mastermind, refugee down. I heard a man say, Jesus walks. Me, myself, I heard Jesus talk Heard it through the wire that he made it out the combo Yeah, in a fast car Driving a fast car Every day is like the wild, wild west Some of us are bad boys, some of us are outlaws On Solve Mystery, the killer get away Hell in Vegas at the end of the day In a fast car Driving a fast car You don't gotta be you don't gotta be no billionaire to get a ticket up to the moon. We all know somebody up there. You need a help me and look, I'm right here to help you see clearly now, yeah. To help you see clearly now, yeah. 
to help you see clearly now, yeah What would you do at the bachelor party in the bar celebrating with all your homies Outside and you ready to ride But over 51 shots you ain't ready to die And you fast gone And you fast gone, yeah Everybody needs some TLC She had it for Doris for some TLC I wish she wasn't the driver In the fast car In that fast car You don't gotta be You don't gotta be no billionaire To get a ticket up to the moon We all know somebody out there You need a help man, look I'm right here To help you see clearly now, yeah to help you to now, yeah. To help you to now, keep the hook going, man. Get your vibe down. You don't gotta be no billionaire to get a ticket up to the moon. We all know somebody up there. You need a helping hand, look, I'm right here to help you see clearly now, yeah. I hope you see clearly now, yeah. I hope you see clearly now. Mastermind in the state of the world, this is how we're feeling this morning. Do that. We're gonna leave y'all one more, one more conscious joint. Because that's how we feeling this morning, you know what I mean? As they run by, so like to the merchant ships. When they chop the dead to guy from the bottomless pit, my hand was made strong. By the end of the Almighty, we struggle in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help me sing? Another song of freedom Cause all I ever had yeah, Redemption song Redemption song Emancipate yourself from mental slavery None but ourselves can free our mind Have no fear for atomic energy None of them can stop at the time how long will they kill our profits while we stand aside in love? Some say it's just a part of it. We've got to fulfill the book. Go, Master, man. Refugees. Won't you help me sing? Oh, I. Another song of freedom. Because all I ever had. Redemption song, redemption song, redemption song, redemption song, redemption song. We need more love in the world, yeah. We need more love in the world, yeah. Good morning, people. We need more love in this world, yeah. Don't need no hate in the world, yeah. Don't need no hate in this world, yeah. Good morning, people. Don't need no hate in this world, yeah. Too much shooting and the looting, yeah. yeah. Too much shooting and the looting, yeah. Listen to me, people. Too much looting and the shooting, yeah. Need more love in this world, yeah. Need more love in this world, yeah. Need more love in this world, yeah. 
good morning people don't need no hate in this world yeah no more wars in this world yeah good morning people love in this world redemption song redemption song
rare boost they said for a great cause let's make it respect it Okay, everyone, I must ask, was I the only one dancing in the background? Because I don't know about you. I myself personally love some Haitian Gaga. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. But really, thank you again to Wyclef and Jerry for putting this together for us and for all their support of VHP. Be sure to keep a lookout for Wyclef Jean and Jerry Wonder's upcoming new album. As we wrap up the evening, I would like to introduce to you all Dr. Andrew Mead one of the co-founders of the Vassar Haiti Project, who along with Lila Mead, has taught us how to create from nothing and be about something greater than ourselves. They are the superstars who have helped to make everything happen in VHB and have supported the students like myself and our efforts to reimagine. So let's all welcome Dr. Mead. Thanks, Clariola. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Mead. I'm the Director of International Services at Vassar, and along with my amazing wife, Lila, a co-founder of the Vassar Haiti Project. Wow, that was amazing. What brilliant music, and thank you, Wyclef Shaw and Jerry Wanda. I don't know about you, Clariola, but my shoes are still dancing. Thank you for being with us this evening, for supporting our efforts to make healthcare accessible in an extremely remote part of Haiti. Your presence, your sponsorship, and your donations tonight have funded the annual operating costs for a year of our clinic, which in very real terms means thousands of people will, will receive healthcare this year uh, that otherwise would not. That means an expectant mother, a grandfather, a child, a baby will be seen by a doctor and receive care or treatment for hypertension, for cholera, for typhoid. Lives have been saved in this clinic and will continue to be thanks to you. An important part of the work of the Vassar Haiti Project is to teach young people how to make a difference, how to stand for the world working for people everywhere. Thanks to all of you for standing with us. As you're about to see, there are so many people to thank tonight. It's almost like movie credits. From the sponsors, whom we're so grateful to, to the honorees, to all of you who have donated and purchased art, to the dozens of Vassar Haiti Project students and alums and volunteers, and finally, and especially to our partners on the ground in Haiti, thank you. And finally, one more thank you. I'd like to especially thank three students, Sonia Gullikeri, Alice Fan, and Catherine Wu, who have taken you through this evening along with Clariola and our daughter Kristen in the background. Uh, and especially one non-student, the incomparable Lila Mead. All of these people have put huge time and effort into making this event such a great success. Do visit our gallery if you've not yet had the chance. Uh, the 15% discount available to you will be honored through Thursday, May 6th, so you have a week. Remember to input the code ANS21 at checkout for your discount. Make sure you write that down somewhere. Thanks, and please do reach out to, out to us at any time if you have questions about our work. I will leave you with a quote. Tipa tipa wazo finishli. Little by little, the bird makes its nest. Step by step, everything is possible, especially when you have an extraordinary team. Here are all 90 of them. Good night, everybody. Le soleil, la capaigne, un carnaval coule mélangé. Moi, dis merci pour des grands gems. Ou quand même qui n'a mis tant comme qui va jamais mon cœur aimer. Merci pour même qui caresse tout mon amour menait en vue. Merci pour ça, maman zombie. Qui l'a qui campe côté pour courir la voie tomber. En jouant et en jouant crier. Tout sous-toi à couler 
Merci pour voir moi qui a parlé. Tout ça n'a moins pas caché. Vous aurez moins qui a tendé. Yo, femme qui me soit parlé, le problème, yo, le motel. Merci pour moi qui a pas jugé. Bon, moi, l'amour, là, yo, croisé. Toujours vini pour yon bravo. Là, l'homme fait dire, adresse, moi, l'homme, yo, a plié. Quand je m'en rie, je m'en prie. Pense à la vie, ma déployé. Qu'il y a raison pour me d'appeler, mais plutôt me compter tout ça, on gagne. Des fois, je m'y t'aime de grimper, mais l'homme tombe toujours levé. Sous des pieds, moi, qui potais, moi, côté tout sous-toi, yo, a coulé. 